What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to a new video. Is striding edge as dangerous and difficult as it's made out to be? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. I hope you enjoy. If you do, leave the video a like and drop a subscribe if you'd like to see more. I am about, well, I'm not sure, maybe 400 metres up this section of Helvellyn by a striding edge today. That's Ulls Water in the background there, just above Glenridden. This section here is about a 700 metre stretch of just, just rock. And um, this is supposed to be the toughest part of this walk. Now, to answer the question straight off the bat, no, I don't think striding edge is as dangerous as it's made out to be. And I have a few reasons why I think that, but it's also good to consider what other people have told you about striding edge if they've been up themselves. It's always good to have someone's opinion that has had the experience before. If it's someone that has never been up there, then all they're really basing that off is maybe what they're scared of from going up there. Maybe it's their own fear from going up. Um, there was a couple up there that I met the day I went that didn't actually make it all the way. They did end up turning around don't think it was the fear of the, the ridge itself, I think it it just became a bit overwhelming at the, there's a section, let me find out what the section's called one sec. The section is known as the chimney, um, and it was right at the foot of the chimney, which is once you've gotten pretty much all the way over the striding edge, and you're at the, the foot of the chimney, which is the, the climb, the scramble to the top of Helvellyn, um, and this couple just turned around I think it was I think it was the girl actually and obviously I think the guy just took took her down now reason number one is there are so many handholds and footholds for you to grab onto to grip to a long striding edge that it's not even funny like for you to get yourself into a situation where you have nothing to hold on to you've probably jumped off the edge. <laughs> there is so many things to grab that it makes it very difficult to feel like you're not secure or safe on the edge. There are also multiple routes along the actual edge, which I'm not sure it's widely talked about this, but you can go straight across the top of the edge and be exposed completely by the, the sheer drops left and right, or you can just go along the bottom left path or the bottom right path, which is just below the ridge. Um, I would say the one on the right is maybe 10 to 15 foot below the top, and the one on the left is maybe five foot below the top, so not, not too low down on the left. Um, now these two paths do sort of intertwine so that they, they, they swing in and out of each other so there will be certain points where you do need to go onto the ridge and then go down the other side and then go back on the ridge and come back down the other side but overall you, there's never one point where you need to just beeline it across the ridge which if you're going up there that's what a lot of people do that's that's the main attraction of walking stride and edge going along the ridge but myself personally I went up alone there were sections where I felt confident to get on the ridge and be exposed from both sides, but there were some sections where I decided, you know what, this is way too much for us, I'm going to get down and go onto the like little dirt tracks on the right hand side of it, which was about 15 foot below the actual top, top ridge line. Now reason number two is probably the more controversial reasons that we're going to dis discuss today, so please let me know in the comments what you think below. Um, but for me, reason number two is it's all in your head because when you're actually on the ridge, it's not really any different to walking along the edge of any fell or any mountain, to be honest. It's just the fact that you do have a drop either side of you that makes you think you're going to fall off it when you're actually not, unless maybe the, the wind. I think the wind is probably the biggest reason behind it. But if you, it, you know, be sensible and don't go up on a bloody windy day. Um, anyth anything maybe over like 25 mile an hour winds is maybe a little bit uneasy if you were standing on the top. But for the most part, 
it's just in your head. So if, if you're afraid of heights, then that makes sense. Um, Cause it's high and there's two big drops either side of you. But for the most part, I think if you just remain calm and just think logically about what you're doing, have a sensible head on, there's absolutely nothing that can go wrong. And it'd be a great shame if certain people didn't experience Stride and Edge due to them being terrified because of what they see on the news. Yes, people have died falling off Stride and Edge, but those circumstances around those deaths, there's a lot of errors that get pointed out. So people make mistakes, just have a sensible head on and don't make those mistakes and you'll be totally fine. Now the third and final reason is, pro in fact probably another controversial one, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway, striding edge isn't even the hardest part of the walk. The hardest part, in my opinion, is swirl edge on the way down. Um, striding was an absolute breeze to go across but coming down swirl took a lot more attention and tactical thought into how you're actually going about descending than striding edge ever took all the way across it so coming down swirl is like doing striding edge but on a slant so you're doing an edge but now you've got a gradient to do it on rather than flat now i don't actually understand why swirl isn't talked about more and the people that i've spoken to after doing it have all agreed with me and said yeah they actually found swirl harder than striding yet striding edge seems to get all of the backlash so when you go up and if you're coming down swirl there is other ways to come down um, and some people continue on and do more summits in the area um, but if you are coming down swirl edge and going back down into Glenridin then just be aware that swirl is technically like striding but on a gradient so you do a lot of bum shuffling on the way down and it's up to yourself whether you go down backwards or you go down facing out. Some areas I found it difficult to look out while I slid down it because it is kind of like a shiny rock, a lot of it. Um, so you're actually sliding down it while holding on to like jagged edges and like lowering yourself down to the next platform. Um, but yeah, striding edge gets the stick but Swirl Edge is harder and scarier, I think. So yeah, um, you don't have to go down via Swirl Edge, but I would still recommend it. But yeah, just have your wits about you when you're coming down there. So yeah, we'll wrap up here. Um, you've probably clicked this video because you've either just went up Striding Edge today, you're planning to go up, or you're unsure if you're gonna go, up, but you wanna have a look online, see um, what it might be like first um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you a little bit of confidence to maybe go up uh, I went up solo so if I can do it solo then you definitely can um, just tell someone where you're going and have a sensible head on for the day and uh, make sure the weather's right and you'll be fine there's nothing to worry about um, take plenty of pictures if you've got a drone take the drone it's absolutely amazing up there with the drone i'll probably put the footage in um in this video while i've while i've discussed this subject so yeah thank you for watching guys i will catch you in the next one subscribe because there's like 65 percent of my viewers aren't subscribers so it means loads to me when i get a new subscriber um and drop me a comment down below of where you're from if you've subscribed just let me know i'd love to see where all the viewers are from all right night guys peace